before you put an offer in on that home that you like, there are a list of things that I have for you that you should do before you submit that offer. Now, when it comes to buying a home, um, whether it's a second home for yourself or whether it is, you know, a first time home for you, if you're a first time home buyer, there are some things that you should know just in case your agent doesn't know. And you can use these things to strategize to put yourself in the best position possible. Always look at the days on market. Now, if the home is a home that is rehabbed or that is investor owned, where they rehab this home, you know, put new everything into it. Or if the home is owned by someone that has moved out, days on market is hurting them. The reason why is the person that has moved out of their home, well, they still have a mortgage to pay because if they've moved out, then they've gone somewhere else. Now they're paying most likely two payments, which nobody wants to do. When it comes to the investment side, the majority of these investors are borrowing money to do these rehabs and these, um, these home renovations. Borrowing money to rehab and renovate a home is very expensive. So if they've been on the market for 100 days or 150 days, they are in a world of pain and most likely just want to get out. So you can use those days on market, give yourself a, a, a better um, opportunity by offering less money because nine times out of 10, if they've been on the market for 150 days, they are hurting and they just wanna get the home sold and they'll be happy if they just break even. Now, the number two thing is price reductions. Pay attention to price reductions. If someone is reducing prices every week or every other week, that is the sign of a motivated seller. They are telling their agent, reduce the price, reduce the price, reduce the price. They may not have told you that they are motivated, but this is a sign that they are motivated. So when you see something like that, again, you can take advantage of it. You can put an offer in at their new reduced price. And in addition to that, ask for enough seller assistance where they can essentially pay your closing costs too. And the only thing you have to worry about is the down payment. As I've said in my previous videos, there are a lot of state and federal programs floating around right now where they've taken that stimulus money, the, the leftover stimulus money, and now they are using it to, to help people create better opportunities in the housing market, especially first time home buyers, because we have a housing shortage. So in order to help people get in, they're giving you forgivable down payment assistance. And once you combine that with a motivated seller that will pay your closing costs, you are able to walk into a home below market value and you don't have to pay the money back, nor do you have to pay money out of pocket to get into the home, which is a great position to be in. Never tell a seller how much you're qualified for. Anytime I submit an offer on behalf of a buyer, I always ask the lender for a new letter. Like for example, I'm working with the buyer right now that's pre-approved for $500,000, but he's buying a home in the range of 300,000 because he feels comfortable in that range. However, when we put in these lower offers um, and ask for these you know, seller assistance, and if I send them a, uh, a pre-approval that shows that they're pre-approved for half a million dollars, they'll say, well, wait a minute, you know, you can pay this higher price or your buyer's pre-approved for half a million dollars. They should be able to afford at least half of their closing costs. Why are you asking for my client to pay the entire amount of the closing costs? So this is a strategy that you can use to hide your, your hand so that you, you're not showing, you're not exposing your strategy. So always, you know, if the home is less than what you're pre-approved for, always get an updated pre-approval letter that is just for that amount. So instead of me sending $500,000 pre-approval letter, I'm sending a $300,000 pre-approval letter and saying, hey, this is my client's maximum approval. Try and have your agent, or if you're representing yourself, try and be nosy by finding out why the seller is selling the home. For example, if the seller has moved to a different state, or if you know the seller's in the hospital, or if you know it's an investor and he needs to get out of the house because he's losing money. You can use these things to put yourself in the best position. Now we know that we're in a market correction. So if you're buying, let's just say, 10% off list or 10% off the appraised value or 15% off the appraised value, um, you won't be affected as much as far as the equity in your home because you bought on what we call the dip, which puts you in better position just in case you need to sell the home um, you know, in the next year or so. So that's just something to think about. But I just wanted to just give you all these quick tips before you put in your offer. You got to ask yourself, and look at the home that you're purchasing so that you can put yourself in the best position moving forward or try and strategize with the agent that you're working with. And again, if you're looking to, to buy a home or sell a home in the D.C., Maryland area, 
Feel free to reach out to me. Forms in the description. Or you can shoot me an email.